1580. We have a 2 kilogram ball that's thrown at the suspended 20 kilogram block. So this ball is thrown at 4 meters per second at the block. Okay. The coefficient of restitution between the ball and the block is 0.8. Okay. Determine the maximum height to which the block will swing before it moment momentarily stops. Okay, so what is happening here? The, the block is stationary. The ball is thrown at the block. There's a transfer of energy. Okay. Something happens between the ball and the block. Something happens to the ball after collision. And something happens to the block afterwards. And the block then ends up moving in this kind of trajectory until it comes to a, a halt at the, at the top. Okay, we, we need to determine what this height is. So with all these kinds of problems, guys, what are the, what are the tools that we have? Well, we've got, we've got momentum, conservation of momentum. That's one tool. We've got conservation of energy. That's another tool. And then, of course, we've got the coefficient of restitution. Remember that the coefficient of restitution only is valid right before impact and after impact right remember that it's it's the velocities after impact I don't know why people are shouting outside my office if that's bothering you I, I'm sorry I don't know why people shout at each other okay so we've got the velocities of both A and B right after impact divided by the velocities well the, the difference in velocities of the particles right before impact Okay, so this only deals with what's happening right before and after impact. Conservation of momentum deals with what's happening before impact and after impact. And then conservation of energy is very helpful for after we have impact or before we have impact to get um, information such as height, velocity, etc. Okay, so... What are we going to do? We want this height over here. Well, we know that the first thing we can do is let's, let's try and use conservation of momentum and see where that gets us. Okay, so mass of A, velocity of A at state 1, plus mass of B, velocity of B at state 1, is equal to mass of A, velocity of A at state 2, plus mass of B, velocity of B at state 2, okay? Simple conservation of momentum. What do we get here? We get 2 kilograms for A, and the velocity is 4. Remember, we're taking right as positive, and then the block is stationary, so zero velocity, no momentum, and then we're going to have 2 times, we don't know what the velocity of A is after impact, and we've got 20 kilograms here times VB2 because we also do not know what the velocity of B is right after impact. So we've got this equation here. We've got two unknowns. The second thing we can use to find um, velocities after impact is this. I've just written it out there. So I'm not going to rewrite this. But we're going to have VB2 minus VA2 divided by the initial velocities, which is 4 minus zero. Okay, the zero is because B, this is B1. Thank you for picking that up. This is B1. We have the ones at the bottom, we have the twos at the top. Okay? So now, but E is equal to 0.8. So this equation, so we can call this our first equation, equation one, and then we've got VB2 minus VA2, if you multiply this out, it becomes 3.2, and this is equation 2. So in both of these equations, we've got VA2 and VB2, which are unknowns. If you um, take these simultaneous equations and you solve, you will get VA2 equal to minus 2.5 basically 5, 4 meters per second, and you're going to get VB2 equal to 0.655, five, okay, something like that. There's some rounding there, okay? So VA2, VB2. 
Now, you have to look at this critically. You've, you've used an equation, you've plugged in some values, you've used another equation, you've plugged in some values. Guys, please think critically. Is, does this make sense to you? Does it make sense? Well, we have a, an E of 0.8. Okay, if you've got an E of the lower your point E, sorry, the lower your E value, the the more energy you're going to lose. Okay, and if you've got an E of zero, these these two particles will stick to each other, and there'll be maximum loss of energy. If you've got an E of point one, you'll have perfect rebounding between the the two particles. So the fact that you've got an E of point eight means that you're gonna. It's very close to almost perfect rebounding. So what is going to happen to A? A is moving in this direction. Because E is so high, then most, not most likely, it'll definitely rebound in that direction. And B will move in that direction after impact. Is that what is happening? VA2 is moving now at minus 2.5 meters per second. So in that direction at 2.54. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. And this will, this block will move at 0.65 meters in, per second in that direction. Makes sense to me. And just logically as well, it's not very scientific, but intuitively, this mass is very low. This mass is very high. And so this will, this will rebound also with a pretty high velocity in relation to its initial velocity. Whereas this... Um, block because it was so heavy just intuitively it, it will move to the right but with a low velocity okay so we've, we've done a kind of an intuitive critical check and it seems to make sense so now that was the first step is to get the initial velocity of this block right right off the impact now we've got the, the velocity of the block right off the impact and that will allow us to do the second analysis, which deals with conservation of energy. So we can use this one, T1 plus V1 is T2 plus V2. Meaning, we've got now the initial velocity of the block. So, and so we can do the kinetic energy, which is half mv squared, which is half times 2, time, oh no, 20 half times 20, we're now just dealing with this block, and 0.655 squared, plus 0, if we take this as our datum, there's no potential energy at, state, at this state 1, then it's equal to, right at the top, its velocity is 0, so there's no kinetic energy, and then we're going to have mgh for this, which is 20, 9.81 times height and we're looking for this height and if you solve for height you will get 0 0.0218 meters or 21.8 millimeters okay so do you see how we've used conservation of momentum coefficient of restitution and uh, conservation of energy to solve these problems okay guys so just break it up don't panic and uh, figure it out. Cheers.